Could you both please introduce yourselves and the course you teach? I'm Martha Gillette. I am professor of cell and developmental biology, physiology, neuroscience, and bioengineering. I'm Rainer Gillette. I'm professor of physiology, neuroscience, and biophysics and computational biology. The course we teach is MCB and Neuro 462, which is Integrative Neuroscience. Can you both give a brief overview of what is covered in your course? This course builds upon the cellular molecular substrates and also the computational substrates of the brain and how it works. How do you do what you do? Why do you, how do you learn things? What happens with drug addiction? Why do you sleep at night? And so we're trying to illuminate what current neuroscience or contemporary neuroscience tells you about the underpinnings in the brain of those phenomena that, we, that makes us who we are. In our lectures, we begin with behavior. We define behavior and we talk about what behavior is there to accomplish and we take that and segue into an analysis of the basic units of the nervous system. How they integrate together to generate patterns, to take sensory input, to integrate it and come out with adaptive motor patterns. We continue on this through sensory and motor physiology to bring in at the end the nature of consciousness and the conditions and necessities through which it evolved. What kind of background knowledge does a student need to take this course? Really, you should be able to take this course if you have a basic introductory knowledge of uh, physics and chemistry. We take this and we build upon it uh, with uh, uh, with your intuitive knowledge of, of how behavior works and the, the integration of physics and chemistry into the function of the nervous system and we build upon it in a stepwise fashion so that uh, almost anyone from engineering, from life sciences, uh, people from people from departments uh, of, of political science and linguistics have taken this course and uh, done extremely well. It takes work, but for a lot of people it's worth it. Really, if you're motivated to understand why you do what you do, that makes a big difference. We've had so juniors, this is their first upper division course, course much to our surprise, who came in without any more background than that and did extremely well in the course because they were passionate about the nervous system. And so that, you know, your motivation makes a huge difference. The passion. How do topics covered in your course apply to current research or medical or scientific advancements? Oh my goodness. That's, <laughs> this is the course that's really taking things from the lab and, pre and prepping you or positioning you to take things into the clinic uh, because it's, it's how the brain works. Um, some of the new contemporary issues in this have to do with uh, elements of vision and how they're processed, uh, how stem cells are restoring sight because of how they integrate with the retina. Um, there is current, currently a lot being done with the basis of neurological diseases like epilepsy which are now their new models on, on them being based in, not the neurons, but in the glia, which are no longer thought to be supportive cells. And so what you have here is people who are reading the contemporary literature and translating that into the foundations that we're teaching in the lectures, but also how they translate into uh, the clinic and human welfare. I might add, uh, for those who are interested in the nature of uh, uh, a variety of uh, pathological states? What's the nature of bipolar disorder? What's its relation to the underlying mechanisms in the brain? What is the nature of impulsivity? What is the nature of addiction? And what is the nature of recovery from addiction? What, uh, what about Parkinson's? What about many of the syndromes that with which we are 
personally familiar because we ourselves may uh, be working with them personally or those in our family or those of our friends. All of these things, uh, many of these things um, we cover in this course and we endeavor to give you the tools with which you can understand with them and perhaps later in your personal life to work with them as well. What are the classes in MCB go well with the content both of you are teaching? Well, we recommend, we recommend the Cellular Molecular Neuroscience course, uh, which is 462. 461. 461. Ours is 462. Right. Which you will see on our flyers, which are posted around, in case you want to double check on that. However, this course can be taken out of sequence. Yeah. And there are other courses that may be beneficial. They're not required. And those courses include? MCB 314, MCB 401. Um, you don't have to take these as prerequisites. In fact, if you come up and talk to us and convince us that you have the motivation in particular and the background with which you can attempt this course successfully, then you're probably going to get in very easily. The other thing we can add is that this is probably the one of the higher level neuroscience courses that you would take in any curriculum. But there are courses that would enhance your understanding, particularly if you get interested in a specific aspect of what we're lecturing about, such as uh, special topics courses, which are taught on uh, like focused areas. I've taught one in, in neurons and glia or biological rhythms and health and disease. Those would be after this course. Rainer? A course that uh, a, a select group of people might be interested in following up is uh, MCB 419, a computational neuroscience, a course that gives you experience in designing neural circuits and in modeling neural circuits. So the last lecture question is, what should a student do if he or she is having trouble with your course? By all means, talk to the TA, talk to us. Don't just sit there, never be afraid to ask a question. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. If I see, uh, have seen any problems in the past, for one thing, just keep up. Don't let yourself get behind. I know your mother told you that, but it's true in this course too, <laughs> because when, the, when you're dealing with complex subjects, if you just keep on task with it, it will make it much easier. And if you don't, as Rainer said, don't understand something, don't wait until just before the exam. Talk to the TA or talk to, to us. We both hold regular office hours as does the as TA. Don't put it off. Come and see us. What are both of you involved with on campus besides teaching this course? Well, I have a number of activities on campus. Um, some of them are service. I, uh, I'm on a committee to evaluate biology all over campus and bring to the fore how much really great biology is happening all across campus at Illinois. I'm involved in the Abbott Center for Nutrition, Learning, and Memory. Um, I'm in, in, involved in other kinds of, you know, less interesting committees than that. But I'm also very involved with the engineers on our campus to do neuroengineering type of research. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that more in the next question. I'm involved with uh, my research into the neural basis of behavior, of, uh, de of how animals make decision. I'm uh, among a number of activities on campus. I'm involved in the research diving board. Uh, we take applications from any researcher who wishes to dive under the auspices, that is within the framework of uh, grant funded research at the University of Illinois anywhere in the world. We look at their application, we make sure that they have the proper training to carry an experience to carry out this work safely, that everybody is medically certified, and that it's going to occur in um, a safe and well thought out environment. This has uh, been um, a very fulfilling and uh, important function of the Research Diving Board over the 
several decades with which I've been involved. Okay. <clears throat> what is one thing a student going into your class should know about either of you? Well, I'll let you answer that first, <laughs> since you're so much more interesting than me. <laughs> well, that's always a matter of uh, your point of view. I am what you call a workaholic. <laughs> I love to do research. I like to work late at night, and I have many different research in initiatives in my lab. Uh, most recently, I'm involved in a center, a science and technology center from the National Science Foundation in collaboration with some of our stellar engineers at Illinois and then others at MIT and Georgia Tech to make machines out of cells. I'm the neural person there. <laughs> I come from a background where I've done a lot of field work. I've done work in ecology, I've done work in physiology, and my thrust is uh, to understand how animals make decisions, how animals interact to form the glue that cements communities within the ecosystem. And this has been a very fulfilling, uh, a fulfilling line of research and it uh, continues on in a very rewarding way. Oh, I want to add something to that. Rainer, having said that, reminded me that I am the principal investigator with others on campus engineers with on one of the new brain initiative awards to use technology to understand brain systems. So that's kind of something you can look it up on the internet. <laughs> Do either of you have a research laboratory? If so, how does a student go about conducting research for credit in your lab? Well, we both have research laboratories. Would basically, you like to start? Basically, you uh, come and ask. The way, I think the proper way to uh, get into a research laboratory is first find out what the laboratory does. And then uh, an email is always good, but uh, you know, an email is very impersonal and it's always easy to ignore an email. Why don't you make a personal visit? Why don't you come and tell us what you're interested in? Demonstrate something about uh, your knowledge of, of the lab and your interest. What Rainer says is, is exactly right. We get many, many requests I, at all levels for, for undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs. Many of them are just generic and you really, if you really want to make an impact, and this goes with whatever you do in life, understand the situation and tell the person who's making a decision about bringing you in what did you bring to the enterprise. Um, so I have a research lab. Did you want to talk about what your research lab does? Oh, we work on uh, invertebrate model systems, we work on the octopus, we work on predatory sea slugs, we work on nervous systems with which we have a very high data rate because they're so accessible. We have a very high data rate to allow us to work out the circuitry that under underlies basic behaviors. We work on invertebrate model systems and we're able to relate them to more complex functions and structure in higher mammals, including human beings. This is the great fun of the whole thing. We have, uh, in my laboratory, we have a, a quite a number of undergraduate students. These undergraduate students are, some of them uh, are basically interested in different animal systems from their previous experience. Others become interested. Some of them go and get really interested in field work and uh, bringing the field work into the laboratory. They go and get their scuba certification and uh, they go to marine labs and take courses. They go to biological laboratories and take courses. They do field work and uh, I think the combination of, uh, of uh, behavior and analyzing the nervous system at the various levels is something that uh, fits them well for whatever they decide to do in the future. So it's interesting that the focus on behavior, because in fact, I got interested in neuroscience. I was not always a neuroscientist because I was fascinated by how the elements of uh, the cell and the cells working together in systems could generate behavior. So part of my research and that for which I'm best known is looking at why you do what you do when you do it. And that is how biological clocks in the brain organize your behaviors, your physiological states with respect to time of day. 
and I have worked in that field and it's led me to some very interesting observations and that is that cells in all parts of the brain show time of day differences and that's some of our newer work on glial cells and their relationship to epilepsy. Uh, and then I, they sort of diverged because of funding opportunities to start working in neuroengineering and I have several collaborations on the engineering campus but one of the more exciting ones is a new award from President Obama's Brain Initiative, and that's to use technology to understand the basis of behavior. We're going to be doing something called optical electrophysiology in brain slices. I work on rodent models. What kind of advice would you give to a student who is interested in your class but does not have the prerequisites? Come and talk to us. You may actually be able to get in the class based on your background knowledge and motivation. And we have regular quizzes in the class that's designed to keep you up to speed, you know, contemporary with what we're lecturing on. Anytime you're going to go into a new research endeavor, I mean intellectual endeavor, I should say, remember we're building on your fundamentals, but the nervous system has its own rules. And so you really want to keep up with the class. That's the only mistake you can make is letting yourself get behind because otherwise it's just totally fascinating. And, and I became a neuroscientist ac after I got my PhD and I just think it's the most wonderful field in the whole wide world. So maybe you will too. <laughs> Another thing that's important is interact with your peers and the class. Mm -hmm. Once you're there, form a group, a study group. This always helps people. And don't forget to come and talk to us if you have any problems at all. Communication. Communication. Student, student, <laughs> student, teacher, teacher, student. This is how we like to run the class. We have uh, an online portion that uh, serves for many people to extend their, their, their range of communication beyond the simple interactions they get from entering and exiting the classroom and serves to introduce them to the rest of the class. We think that in the previous years this has served very well to enhance people's experience, to enhance their motivation and their rate of acquisition of knowledge and their accomplishment. Okay.